What's going on everybody, C4 here and welcome back to the Madden 20 Ratings Prediction Series where today we're taking a look at the Washington Redskins, a very interesting team when it comes towards Madden 20 Rebuilds. I think they're going to be kind of a popular team to choose. I don't know about you guys, what do you think? I just think given the quarterback scenario, they are going to be a team that a lot of people think they can turn into a powerhouse because there is a lot of good talent around the quarterback, but can you solve that issue? Can you develop Dwayne Haskins into your franchise starter as well as move Alex Smith's pretty big contract with lots of guaranteed money off the books? Let's check out their roster and how I think they're going to shape up for Madden 20. At the quarterback spot, Alex Smith, I think he's going to get a 79. You got to remember like two years ago, he was in the MVP discussion. And while he didn't look great last year with the Washington Redskins, there's only so much regression one can have. Now, the question is more so in real life, will you ever be able to play again because of the botched knee injury? Because those top of the line medical services for the Washington Redskins. But that is another story. I think he'll open up as a 79. Dwayne Haskins will get around a 74, I think. Uh, given the fact that there is going to be a ratings down increase, I've had you know a couple uh, couple leaks, couple rumors. Uh, you know the new rating scale in Madden 20 is going to be pretty harsh for some rookies, and I think you know all I'm going to say is this: all I'm going to say is that I'd be skeptical about at least the rating scale from previous Maddens, where like top rookies will get 80s, and you know the lowest pick that you know the, the worst reaches in the first round will still get a 73. Throw that out the window. I think the rookie rating scale is going to be way, way off. So, I mean, even 74 for Dwayne Haskins could be a little bit generous. But I think he he should get the second highest QB rating after Kyler Murray. And we'll give that him 74 for right now. Maybe has a chance to pull a star dev trait. At the running backs, we got Adrian Peterson, who we're going to give in 83 overall last season. 1,250 yards from scrimmage. Eight total touchdowns. Resurrecting his career with the Washington Redskins. You know, even though I've kind of soured on him just a little bit because of the off-the-field stuff, as far as on-field, he might be one of my favorite running backs ever. So uh, as long as he's not going to go, going off against the Eagles, I do enjoy watching him play. Chris Thompson, we're going to give him a 79 last season. Uh, played a lot, you know, missed a bunch of time. Still almost got 500 yards of scrimmage and a touchdown. I think one of the better receiving backs in the National Football League, a great compliment to AP. But here's a man that they hope has a breakout year next year. That is Darius Geis. Hyped up as the second best running back last season after Saquon Barkley. Slipped in the second round because I guess his interviews suck, off the field issues, whatever. Then he suffered a torn ACL, I think it was, in the preseason. But I know Redskins fans are very, very optimistic about him. They also got Bryce Love from Stanford, another running back that, you know, had a lot of hype. Again, reason heights and weights are all messed up. That's why I'm not releasing these rosters because Bryce Love is barely 200 pounds. Um, and he'll put him at 205. Be a little bit generous there. Oh, yeah, of course, didn't save. Whatever. But Bryce Love, uh, you know, I think if he would have tested the combine, would have been maybe the fastest running back at the combine, beating Justice Hill. Obviously coming off a terrible year with Stanford, but two years ago might have been the most dynamic running back in college football. So, I mean, lots of optimism for this Redskin backfield. At wide receiver, we got Paul Richardson Jr. We'll give him a 79 overall. Was banged up last year. Only played in seven games, 20 yards, or 20 catches, sorry, 260 yards, two touchdowns, but went healthy. I mean, you know, he could be that wide receiver 1-2 that they're looking for. Doxon, 76, you know, kind of looking like a bust. Uh, they got Trey Quinn, probably going to be the brand new slot guy, taking over for Jameson Crowder. They got two rookies that I really do think was good value, Kelvin Harmon and Terry McLaurin. Uh, I definitely would watch both those guys to have impactful years for the Redskins, especially McLaurin with his chemistry that he already has with Dwayne Haskins. At tight end, Jordan Reed will give him an 85 overall again. You know, he stayed more healthy than he, last year than he has in previous years, but that is the biggest knock against him right now is that, well, he, well, A, he's not a complete tight end. He's a glorified wide receiver, and I say that as truthfully as a Florida Gator fan. He's, he's not much of a blocker. He's a tremendous asset as a receiver, but, you know, his injuries have been uh, his Achilles heel, pun intended. But last season, Jordan Reed, 54 catches, 560 yards, two touchdowns. As far as a pure receiver, he's almost as good as it gets in the National Football League. So he still will pull an 85. We gave Vernon Davis an 80. I think he had almost 400 yards, two touchdowns. Fills in good for spot duty when Jordan Reed goes down. Offensive line, we have Trent Williams, 89. Didn't grade out well from pro football focus, but... I mean, there's there's certain times when, yeah, I think his base rating was a 91 or 92. So, yeah, I will take a little bit of a regression, but not, you know, Pro Football Focus, I think, gave him like a 74 or something like that. And usually Madden kind of correlates with Pro Football Focus. Like, if they get a 74 point something, that means they'd get a 74 rating in Madden. Uh, that That's that's almost a consistent trend. I'm not going to, you know, knock Trent Williams too, too much. He still is one of the best tackles in football. We will take a little bit of a regression. I don't know how, how much... 
How, how, how excited they are having Eric Flowers as their assumed starter at left guard. That's not good. Chase Rulli at, sever, uh, at center 75. He was actually one of my big call-outs a couple of three years ago when he was coming out uh, as an underrated offensive lineman. He's been able to have a nice little career there for the Washington Redskins so far. Brendan Schreff gets an 86, really solid guard. And Morgan Moses at right tackle with a 76. Jumping to the defensive side, very underrated defense, doesn't get enough respect. Matt Ioannidis from Temple, he's going to pull in an 82 overall, 7.5 sacks, 6 TFLs last season. Jonathan Allen at right defensive end, I'm giving him an 84 overall last season, 8 sacks, 11 tackles for loss. You know, he definitely uh, is starting to put it all together, and you would assume his best football is still ahead of him. A little bit worried about that as a Eagle fan. And in the inside, keeping that Alabama pipeline strong, Deron Payne, real nice rookie season. We'll give him an 82 overall. Last year, he had five sacks, six TFLs. And again, much like Jonathan Allen, I have this weird suspicion that Deron Payne is only going to get better. Looking at the linebackers, we have Ryan Kerrigan, who we're going to give an 88, super consistent as an edge rusher. Like, he's guaranteed to get you 12 sacks a season, if not more. Last season, 13 sacks, 11 tackles or loss. And every time, I've never got an answer for this. And I'm always going to ask it anytime I talk about Kerrigan or the Redskins. Why is he not a team captain? I've It's always kind of shocked me because, you know, it, it, it stands out there, the yellow badges on those burgundy jerseys. He never has one. And I was like, why not? Doesn't he seem like he should be? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want it. Uh, in the inside, they got Ruben Foster, who actually looks like it was a gamble well worth paying off as his charges were dropped, and he probably, I mean, I don't know. Is he, is he going to get suspended from the league? I don't know yet. But another Alabama pipeline player who was really, really good as a rookie for the 49ers. They released him because he's off the field. The Redskins obviously have no morals as an organization, signed him, and it might actually work out for them. Mason Foster will give him a 77 last year, 131 tackles, two picks, four TFLs. So high 70s is what we get for these linebackers that have much better stats than what they are as players. He's not bad. He's also just not great. Zach Brown was a big loss for them, and I'm happy as an Eagle fan that we were able to acquire him. And then right outside linebacker, we have Mon Tez Sweat. I mean, next to the Buffalo Bills, the Redskins have a valid argument to say they're the second best draft in the uh, from the 2019 draft, Montez Sweat is going to be a height, weight, speed freak. Use your god. I'm already I'm trying to figure out right now in rebuilds how I'm going to be able to trade for him and move him to defensive end. But I think he definitely will get a 75 star deb somewhere in that territory. With that, oh my god, man! How how are you six six two sixty five and run like a four low four fours? That was ridiculous. Uh, in the secondary, we have Josh Norman, who we're going to give an 82 overall last season. Three interceptions, nine pass breakups on 64 tackles. Inconsistent, but still you know, a pretty damn good corner. Quentin Dunbar, converted wide receiver from my Florida Gators. I'm giving him a 78 in only seven games last year. Two picks, nine pass breakups. I think uh, he could be a starter. They threw you know, caution to the wind here and just trying to stick, see what sticks by bringing in DRC. I don't know if he even makes the roster, but you never know. They have Moreau, nice on corner. I love the Jimmy Moreland selection. I'm giving him a 70. I think he has a chance to be their starting nickel. Keep an eye on that one. Keep an eye on that bull prediction. At free safety, Monte Nicholson, 74. Terry Apkins, I mean, these ratings here are pretty much staying in line with what they finished with in Madden 19 for the base rosters. At strong safety, Landon Collins coming over as a free agent from the Giants. Collins had a down year last year. Uh, he's still really good. We're going to give him an 84, but he definitely... Did not look great last year with the Giants, but Redskins have had a lot of success with safeties. Like DJ Swanger kind of got tossed around the league, ever didn't really work with the Texans, I believe. And then he went to Redskins, played very, very well. And I think Landon Collins is a big upgrade over HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, who, again, I think is riding off his name just a little bit. His play doesn't really live up to what you think HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix used to be a couple years ago with the Packers. But I think Landon Collins is going to fit well in this scheme, and they paid him a lot of money to do so. But I think that this was a nice investment for the Redskins. At kicker, we have Hopkins, 78. Tressway, one of the better punters in the league, 82. I think that from my ratings, he's top five punter. So there you go, guys. Those are my Madden 20 predictions for the ratings of the Washington Redskins, a team that I think will be a very popular rebuild team. What do you guys think about them? If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comment section below. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.